Welcome back to Love Renee. I'm Renee, and we are on episode number five, where we get down and dirty with the nitty gritty of our bodies, these flesh sacks that we carry around with us each and every day. I share some stories from my life about how I kind of came to reconcile parts of my body that I didn't like. And I talk about my grandmother and really the women that I come from and how that's helped me learn to appreciate and accept parts of my body. So make sure that you stay tuned for that. I'm going to share a poem by Jane Hirschfield, and then we'll hear from one of you who shared some thoughts on change um, from episode number four. So thank you for tuning in. I hope you enjoy today's episode. One day I was walking through my grandmother's house. Thick carpet, woven tapestries, dark wood furniture from a time when you bought one piece for the whole of your life. And framed, seated on her dresser, next to the modest jewelry and handmade doilies, I saw a picture of a woman. I'd seen it before, but this day I noticed. The woman had my eyes. I've always had these dark circles under my eyes. Whether I slept well or I didn't sleep at all, there they were. As a teen, I would look at my eyes and then at all the other girls in school who didn't have dark circles at that age, and I wished that I could change them. So I got all the expensive under-eye treatments, but they never really worked. Then I got the concealer, but it never looked Right, I was never one for a lot of makeup, so I gave up. And years later, there I was, standing in front of a picture of my grandmother's mother at my age, great-grandmother Mabel, and there were my eyes. Something reconciled in me, if being hers means these circles, then I'll take them. If being a part of the legacy of these strong and kind women means these eyes, I'll love them. I'm guessing that you've got parts of you that you'd want to change. You know, that thing that sticks out to you like a sore thumb that others don't really notice. The stuff we spend time and money covering up. Is there a way to reconcile it? Like the stretch marks on your belly becoming signs of your children. Like a scar from a battle you fought and won. Like the eyes that remind me I come from strong, kind women. That same grandmother struggled with arthritis in her hands. And with those hands, she made me and my brothers memory books for our high school graduations. She meticulously cut photos, stickers, wrote captions to catalog our lives thus far. Because of her hands, these photos and paper turned into something much more meaningful than the material. They became an embodiment of her love and care for us. Her arthritic hands got in the way all the time, but in one case, They became the way she showed us her heart. These bodies we have are complicated things. But there's beauty in them for those who are willing to look. Love, Renee.
A Hand by Jane Hirschfield. A hand is not four fingers and a thumb, nor is it palm and knuckles, not ligaments or the fat's yellow pillow, not tendons, star of the wrist bone, meander of veins. A hand is not the thick thatch of its lines with their infinite dramas, nor what it has written, not on the page, not on the ecstatic body, nor is the hand its meadows of holding, of shaping, not sponge of rising yeast bread, not rotor pins smoothness, not ink. The maple's green hands do not cup the proliferant rain. What empties itself falls into the place that is open. A hand turned upward holds only a single transparent question, unanswerable, humming like bees, it rises, swarms, departs. Now it's time to hear from you. Remember that you can leave me a comment. You can send me an email at lovereneepodcast at gmail.com. If you have a question, story, idea, image in response to any of these episodes, I would love to hear from you. I specifically like to hear based on today's episode a way maybe that you've come to appreciate a part of your body that you used to cover or change. Or maybe your story is different from mine that when you look at parts of your body that remind you of your family. It's not joy, but pain. Um, Feel free to share that with us too. And maybe I'll feature you in an up and coming episode. This week, I received an email from a friend about the last episode on change. He highlighted the way that change doesn't happen in a vacuum. Our changes impact others. Nations, communities, groups are always in conversation about what needs to change and what shouldn't change. And I use the word conversation loosely because it can often devolve into something far worse. You know, sometimes we experience conflict because our values are coming into tension with another's values. My values might mean that I disagree with some of the changes we see taking place or the opposite. My values might lead me to advocate for change in some areas. The point being that we can't make change in and of itself good or bad. It's a problematic shorthand many of us have. If it's change, it's bad. Doesn't matter what it is. Doesn't matter what it'll do. It's bad. Or the reverse. If it's change, it's good. Doesn't matter what it is. Doesn't matter what it'll do. It's good. Change isn't good or bad. Change is change. It's the things that happen in and around change that perhaps have some sort of a value. I want to thank my friend for writing in and letting me know how the podcast got him thinking about things that have taken place in his life, times and situations where he advocated for change and watched other people struggle with that and fight against that, and also times in his life when he's watched maybe society or culture begin to change and not... uh, been excited about those changes and struggling with those and not believing in those changes and what it is to 
um, kind of understand that we all find ourselves on one side or the other at different times in our lives. It's helpful for me to hear back from you, and I think it helps make this podcast much better. So you're always welcome to get in touch with me. If you disagree with me, let me know. If you're on board with me, let me know. If you love what's going on or you have an idea or a perspective that you'd like to share, I'm open to it. So feel free to be in touch with me. Love Renee podcast at gmail.com. L-O-V-E-R-E-N-E-E-P-O-D-C-A-S-T at gmail.com. And you might find yourself featured on an up and coming episode. That's everything though for today. Thank you so much for listening all the way to the end. And I hope that I will catch you back here next time.